geyser in the east uh, sanctuary. Ladies here tonight. Thank you for coming. YouTubers, bless you tonight. Love having you. Okay, let's get going. All right. My uh, wife's here tonight. It's ladies' night. Honey, come out and wave at the gals. Come on out and wave at them, honey. Some people said, does she really exist? Um, <laughs> yeah, she really, she's actually a real person. Can you see us, hon? Is she in there? Oh, she already ran out. Okay. Actually, she doesn't exist. I made that up. She's not real. All right. Our next seminar is at the end of March. I'm not sure what the title will be. <clears throat> Here's my radio schedule uh, in Arizona. And uh, our Saturday uh, show has changed uh, to, excuse me, our Monday through Friday show at 530 just changed to 545. So I got to fix that. I just got that today. You can catch all the radio shows on uh, the website and on the internet 24 hours a day right here. Omni FM has all the shows. Uh, my numbers were down to 17.5 last week for this uh, dark sky radio.com program. It's on every night at 9 o'clock. Doing good. If you want to help our ministry out financially, we would appreciate it. If you don't have any money, that's fine. If you buy something off Amazon, just use Smile Amazon and put in our uh, name and they'll donate 1.2% of whatever you buy there to our ministry for free. It won't cost you anything. Pretty easy. Tonight's teaching is on uh, our YouTube teaching channel number one, House of Healing AZ. These are the miracle lists I mention every week. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com if you have somebody who wants to get delivered at home and uh, they don't have any access to a deliverance service or a minister or what have you. Okay? Or they're too afraid to come. Just give them these lists. One's for mentally ill Christians. The other's for troubled Christians. Well, Brother Mike, where do you find those? Uh, church is the best place to find them. My experience, <clears throat> YouTubers and uh, anyone here from another church. We are not a church, by the way. This is a healing center. And we don't compete with churches. That's why we have activities Thursday night and Friday night. So we're not trying to get people to come here and leave their church. Okay, you stay with your church. This is an adjunct to churches. We're not trying to recruit you out of your church. Okay. When you get to your church, find two or three other people who have gone through deliverance, and then you set up a little terror cell in your church, terrorizing the devil. You start picking off sick people in your church. It works great. You meet them at home or at a you know, home group, uh, some class at the church, empty, whatever. Use your imagination. And you just ask them if you can pray for them. You take them through deliverance. A good guide is that list that I send out for troubled Christians. One through five on that list is a tremendous guide for leading other people through deliverance. Real easy to follow. Bing, 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 bing. Bang. See, it's the big bang. That's what you're looking for. The donation boxes are on the doors. All the doors are locked. You can donate on the website if you want to, and a lot of people do that, and we are grateful for that. I wrote three books, one on exposing Satan, one on healing mental illnesses, and one on divine healing. They're in the bookstore. You need a donation receipt for 2018. YouTubers, if you send in a donation or anybody on the radio, just send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Send it out right away. Thursday nights, our healing room is booming. It's tremendous last night. Huge anointing. Rick's in the small sanctuary there. That service is off the hook. And then we also have in this sanctuary area here, we pull the sides here. And this is our mental illness healing class here. If you know somebody has bipolar or schizophrenia or something like that, Thursday night, 7 o'clock right here. Brother Ron is teaching it. It is going great tremendous 
Okay. Tonight is ladies night. All right, let's take a look at the women. We're going to be discussing some women's issues here. I don't have time not to be blunt, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. Boom, let's just go through it. If you uh, get mad at me or something, calm yourself down. Women uh, are more spiritual than men, and they're more emotional than men, and their souls are stronger than males. And because of that, they're able to endure more pain than men. They have tremendous ability to endure pain over a longer period of time than men do. Men can take it, take more than women for a shorter period of time, but a longer marathon stretch of pain, women are stronger than men. And their souls are different than men. And here's an example of it. Let's go over it real quick with Rebecca. You remember her, she's in Genesis 25. She says, Isaac loved Esau. Say, uh, would you ask uh, my wife to get me a, some water and bring it up here? Yeah, that way people can see she actually is alive. Uh, now, Esau, Isaac loved Esau. Why? Isaac was a very fleshly person. He was a fleshly type Christian. He would fit right in here in American Christianity. Very carnal, very fleshly person. Very strong person. He loved Esau because he fixed him what? Yep, and Rebecca loved Jacob, okay? Jacob was a mama's boy. Esau was the bigger, stronger son. He came out first. There was a fight, cage match in the womb. There's my wife, uh, Lori. Uh, <laughs> she's changed. She's changing into another person. That's fine. A lot of wives do that. My other wives all change into another person. Whoa, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I drank my way through those. Yes, I. <laughs> but I repented. And uh, there was a cage match in the womb, and the stronger brother prevailed. And he came out first. And he got the birthright and the blessings. The mother, Rebecca, who was drop-dead gorgeous and grew up in a family of pathological liars and manipulators, which is what she was, she used her beauty as an asset, a tool, and she manipulated people with her intelligence and her looks. She liked Jacob. Esau was 40 when he got married a couple of Hittite women, okay? And these were women who drove uh, Rebecca nuts. She couldn't stand her daughters-in-law. And it doesn't say whatever reason it was, but they were a different religion right out of the gate. So there's nothing but problems right there coming in. So that happens a lot to mothers. Their children marry somebody they don't like. That is very common. And what the devil does is he uses relationships to destroy families. And he's the world's most powerful matchmaker. He matches up people to get married that shouldn't even shake hands, let alone get married. And they enter the relationship, and it's like a pipe bomb, and it starts destroying the whole family. The whole family is damaged by poor, rotten marriages. If you married a bad man, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You had nothing but heartache and sorrow because you married somebody you chose to marry, God did not choose that person for you. You insisted on marrying him. So the good, good Lord said, well, I'll work with him because I love him. I'll do the best I can with him. But when you married somebody you shouldn't have married, hell came to your house. And it was painful, to say the least. A grief of mine is putting it lightly. You know the rest of the story, right? You've read this story before. Uh, she... Stole Esau's birthright for Jacob, okay? She was a manipulator. She was very pretty, very intelligent. So she used her assets to control other people. Uh, she sent Jacob away because Esau hated him over what she had done and talked him into doing. Uh, she manipulated Isaac to send 
Jacob to get a wife. He was 77 when he got married. Wow. 77 in our society. You're heading toward the grave by 77. I mean, you're on the downslide fast. And uh, there, they're just getting ready, getting busy. Weird. Times have changed. Uh, he was a mama's boy. He stayed in the tents with Rebecca. He learned all the things that uh, Esau didn't learn. He was out in the woods. He was a man's man. Jacob was softer. He was funny. He liked his mom. He grew up cooking. Well, he was a great cook. In fact, that's how he got uh, Isaac fooled. He was a good cook. He, was, he knew how to take care of the house, so to speak. He was also very intelligent, very good looking, like his mother. And when she sent him away to get away from Esau, she never saw her son again. Yeah. So if you are a codependent mother and you're giving, constantly giving your kids something over and over again, if you give them too much, it's as bad as neglecting them or abusing them. Giving them too much is a form of child abuse yeah. because they don't know how to stand on their own two feet when you're not around. Yeah. And uh, Rebecca said to Isaac in Genesis 27, I am weary of my life because of my daughters-in-law. The daughters-in-law didn't respect her. They didn't respect Jehovah. They dishonored her. They wouldn't listen to anything. You know how in-laws are. You know how stepkids are. Drives you crazy because they're not really your family. They're coming in from another source. The devil uses a woman's love against them. And he teaches them to love too much. And he teaches them to love to the point where they're carrying burdens for other people. They carry burdens on their souls. Okay? Men are more apt to just kind of hurt over it for a while and then cut it. More likely just to dump it. Women know they're more likely to carry something in their soul on a long-term basis. And the devil uses those soul wounds to give the woman physical and mental illnesses later in life. He uses those wounds and those disappointments and those heartaches on the soul to give you sicknesses and illnesses later in life. Tough love is love. Okay? And a codependent mother like Rebecca can't do tough love. They can't bring themselves to do it. And you can't either on your own. You have to see it and repent of it. And the Holy Spirit will allow you to do it. Had you used tough love on your kids, you wouldn't see the same horror they're going through now. Had you had that revelation years ago. Before your kids went bad. The words of Esau, Genesis 27. These words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. What was that? He said, when, when my dad dies, I'm going to kill him. So she does what? She sends him to her brother. <clears throat> Remember him? The pathological liar, Laban. The whole family was a bunch of liars and manipulators. That's where Rebecca came from. She sends her son to those kooks. That's right. It's very similar to getting adopted into a crazy family very common to be placed in a foster home where the parents have got demons and they're mentally or emotionally ill and they end up abusing the kids. She sent her son back to the insane world she came from because in her mind, listen, I'd rather have him alive with my crazy relatives than I would have Esau kill him. So she's balancing the two. Very common for mothers to do. They balance and weigh the good and the bad, and then they choose the lesser of two evils. So she sends him to Laban, and you know how that turned out. She said, tarry with him a few days until your brother's fury leaves. She never saw her son again. It wasn't a few days. Then she says, stay there until your brother's anger turns away from you 
and he forgets what you did to him Intelligent attractive manipulators When they get caught and things go bad always blame somebody else They're always pointing their finger at somebody else. They're never taking the blame themselves. That's why Christians can't get healed because as long as you're blaming somebody else for your problems you don't have a ghost of a chance in hell of ever being healed. The Holy Ghost requires you to face it yourself and confess it and admit it before you can get delivered. If you decide not to do it, you're on your own. Okay? You came here tonight because you are not on your own. The Holy Ghost brought you here and you're to be healed tonight. You're going to issue some tough love. You're going to remove some people from your lives you need to get rid of. So you can be healed tonight is about you Not about all these dysfunctionals. You've been supporting all these years using you as Man hi mom give me something else do something else for me here mom here you go kiss this honey There now give me that where's your purse? Where's the bank account? Where's the check and oh this is a Hi, mom. I didn't recognize you. I thought you were a doormat. Okay, you're going to repent of that tonight because you being a doormat to your family is only hurting your family. You are helping them become spiritual losers and you are jeopardizing their soul by being somebody they can wipe their feet off on. Oops, mama. Mom, you ever step in some dog poop? Yeah, you come in, you don't want to spread it. Then you try and get something, scrape it. Right? And that's your mom. You scrape it. Okay. You're not letting people scrape dog poop on you anymore after the night. I said that because a lot of people like prophetic stuff. So what I, a lot of times, the prophetic kind of, got to cater to everybody. Why should I be deprived of you both in one day? That's exactly what happened. Esau left, and so did her son. She lost them both. And that's what happens to everybody who's a controller and a manipulator. Sooner or later, the devil takes everything you've tried so desperately to hoard. The people you try to hoard, he will eventually take them from you and leave you in a vat sorrow and misery and your soul will be weeping because you didn't do the right thing years ago you'll end up like who Rebecca the devil uses abuse to draw fear and anger and rejection and lust into people's homes we call them dysfunctional families they're like dryers <laughs> And there they are, the lust demons, the fear spirits, all these different fear spirits get into the home. It's almost like a commercial dryer. And they float around from person to person. They infect everybody. And one of his greatest tools is what? Sexual sin. Exactly. In our society, guys are super sexed. <clears throat> and if you were a guy, wouldn't you be super sexed? Every time you open the magazine, every time you turn on the TV, every ad, every Super Bowl ad, everything, it's all nothing but sex floating all over you. It's everywhere. You pick up your phone, boop, there's a pop-up. There it is. Beep. Oh, there's a chick. Uh, Ten years old now, statistically, is when children are introduced to hardcore pornography. When I was a kid, <clears throat> you had to find your granddad's stash of playboys that's all there was and okay? there was nothing else to see there was no TV ads with naked women on there was no nothing was on my TV Ricky and Lucy wore pajamas to bed I'm not making this up and slept in separate beds that's not a joke that actually happened that's a true statement no one believes it they slept in separate beds. Okay. Nowadays, they're all in the same bed. Nobody has any clothes on. They're humping like rabbits right on TV. Okay. And this monstrous sexuality from Satan 
floods all these men and these men pick up lust demons and these lust demons enter their body and they treat women like commodities they don't see you as a person they see you as an, an asset a commodity they scan you like they do a car and they look at your body they check your breasts out they look at your booty they want to know what you they check your everything out they're looking at you at like you're a piece of equipment See, and that's how our society now teaches men to do it. They're taught and raised to see women as commodities, not humans. And the demons don't see you as a human. They hate your guts. So what they do is they use sexuality to load you with demons. And you can pick them up when you have illicit sex and they transfer into your body. Now let's take a look at a couple words here real quickly. You'll see this in the New Testament. These Greek words, real fast. I'm not going to spend any time on it. Pornia is fornication. Moikia is adultery. Selgia is lasciviousness, sensual behavior. Porne is a promiscuous female. In the King James Bible, it's translated as a harlot. A pornos is a promiscuous male, translated in the King James Bible as a whoremonger. Okay? Now, the reason I want you to see that is because you have to understand this part of the teaching. If you don't understand it, my section on divorce is going to collapse on me. Pornia is the Greek word for fornication. Moikia is the Greek word for adultery. Is there a difference? Yes and no. All adultery is fornication. Very little fornication is adultery. Why? Moikia or adultery is a heterosexual sin. All forms of sexual sin are lumped in the one big category that are fornication are you with me so if you uh, your husband had an affair at work with a woman that is moikia adultery if your husband came out of the closet and had an affair with a guy that is not adultery <clears throat> that's fornication if if your husband had a one night stand with a farm animal that is not adultery that is fornication correct all sexual sin is pornea, fornication. So, this week I interviewed some guy. He was heterosexual, living a heterosexual life, but inside he was sexually attracted to gays, men. Okay, so when he slipped spiritually and got into porn, he watched what kind of porn? Men. Gay porn, correct. Gay porn, which is not adultery. It's fornication. Anybody have a question about what I just said? Because if I lost that, then I'm going to lose the whole next section. Is there any problem? Did I do anything? Did I make a mistake? Is anything confusing? What's the question? I used to think that if they were married and were committing sexual sin, that they were committing adultery. What kind of sexual sin? Um, it depends. Uh, uh, if there was a man, this is just my time, and, and he it's not adultery. another woman. Another woman is adultery. Another woman. Another woman. 
another guy is fornication. Adultery is heterosexual. You say, well, who cares? Well, it makes a difference when you're studying the text. Okay, now let's let's go forward. Okay, am I done here? If you're bisexual, you could be an adulterer or a fornicator, right? Depending on the sex of the person you're with. If you're a pedophile, same answer. If you're a, a Roman Catholic priest and you're attracted to third grade boys, you're fornicating. You're not committing adultery. If you are raping nuns as a bishop, you are an adulterer and a fornicator. If you're a male bishop, and they're all males, correct? I'm talking Catholic now. I do radio shows on this stuff all the time. I clarify it there. So that's, see, there's a difference between moikia and fornication. Who cares? Well, it's itemized in scripture. Okay, let's take a pop quiz so we make sure we got this section so I make sure I don't lose it. Okay? If your husband slept with a man, that is what? Fornication is the correct answer. <sighs> Your husband slept with a she goat. Fornication is the correct answer. Thank you. Oh, I feel good about the seminar. Your husband fondled a child. It's fornication, but it could be adultery depending on the sex of the child, is the correct answer. The price is right. I just turned into Bob Barker. Now, your husband ran off with another woman. Adultery and fornication. Correct. Your husband went to a massage parlor. Well, it's fornication out the gate, and then if it's adultery, it would be a female ma masseuse. Well, what do they call them? What's a female masseuse? Or is that a male? I don't know. They're all masseuses. Okay, if it was a female masseuse, then it would be adultery, massaging. Correct? And fornication. All sexual sin is fornication. All of it. Porn, bestiality, pedophilia, name it. Name anything. It falls into pornea, fornication. Your husband paid for drugs and got oral sex. That is fornication for sure. And if it was from a female, it would have been Correct. Oh, good. This is going to go well. Now, fornication, not just adultery, allows unclean spirits to enter the family. Okay? Let's meet some dysfunctionals loaded with demons. There they are. The Kennedy family. Here he is, Joseph Kennedy, their senior, the guy that brought all the curses on the family. In Habakkuk chapter 3. The Bible says a curse falls on you if you get other people drunk. If you're an alcohol farmer, so to speak, and you get other people drunk, if you own a bar and you're getting other people drunk, a curse falls on you. This guy here became a multimillionaire importing scotch whiskey into America, and he helped start alcoholism in the United States. His whole family went through nothing but hell for decades. Okay? Curses are real, folks. They are horribly real, the Bible says. Oh, there they are. There's the royal family. One kook after the other run around in that joint. Okay, now let's look at another dysfunctional family biblically. I'll give you an idea how these spirits transfer down through the generations. Some people call them generational curses, but they're actually spirits. They get in here. Then they go down the tree. They don't jump over there. They stay in this tree and then they wipe that family out. Okay? In this case, it was unclean spirits of lust. Remember these stories? David commits adultery with somebody else's wife. 
and then he murders him Remember remember that for Samuel 11. Let's go to 13 then Amnon rapes Tamar Remember that that's his That's that was his half-sister and Amnon was uh, King David's son By another woman not Bathsheba by another wife. I should say pardon me <clears throat> Okay, and then number three do you remember this one Absalom rapes all of David's wives and then he also murders Amnon because he raped Tamar remember <clears throat> so we've got these demons entering the family through King David Then they go down the family tree and if you look in your family, you'll see a pattern of sin going down the tree alcoholics divorces criminals different different flavors but you'll see that pattern sweeping through a family. Those are the spirits that transfer down from one generation to this one. They they go down. And uh, Adonijah was executed by Solomon. Why? He wanted to marry one of King David's or other wives. Remember that story? First Kings chapter two. Solomon found out about it and executed the guy. And then. King Solomon, who was Mr. Righteous at the time, turned into history's most monstrous sex addict. This crazy nut uh, went completely bonkers, which is what sex addiction does. It takes over your mind and you lose your mind. Okay? Nobody in their right mind has 600 wives. I don't care how rich you are, you're never going to survive. You can't even survive with one wife. You can't even take care of one wife. That's a full-time job. Six hundred wives? Oh, you gotta be kidding! I'm, I'm going. It's twenty-four-seven. <laughs> you got to be kidding! He was a complete sex addict. Became an idolater. Stabbed Jehovah right in the back. And listen to me. This was the most intelligent human being on the planet at the time. He was their Albert Einstein, so to speak. Okay. So this gives you an idea of the power. Of the kingdom of darkness and how powerful demons are and how intelligent they are and how they can fool you using your soul your emotions and using your body and your senses they're experts at fooling people experts at fooling them. and you could be smartest person in the world and end up in the total disaster the only hope we've got is the Holy Ghost Nobody's smarter than him not even close and he lives right in there King Solomon If you're a really intelligent person and you know it you are in some big trouble Because the devil's smarter than King Solomon so the demons will use your IQ against you in my ministry doing deliverance some of the hardest people to get delivered are intelligent people you wouldn't believe how hard it is to get somebody with a high IQ. Wow. I must have wasted a lifetime of hours working with people with high IQs. Now I'm so conditioned to it. If somebody comes in and they're really bright, I just gulp. <laughs> I gulp and then I I look for Kelly, you know. Uh, dump them on Karina. That kind of thing. Now let's go to this now. This is very common with women. Very common with women because they have vibrant souls. Their souls are more vibrant than males. They they feel more, they sense more. They their spirit man is too. They're more apt to have communion with the Holy Ghost, women, than men are. Because they don't have two things men have. What is it? <laughs> Testosterone. These things here caused almost all the wars in humanity. This thing is not good. The second thing is machismo. They got this, wait a minute, I'm a man's man. Ugh, that quenches the Holy Ghost faster than you can even imagine. A man's man, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is a man's man. There ain't no other man. He's the only one. Women are less apt to run through testosterone and they're less apt to have machismo and that's why you see women so many women serving God 
like a two or three to one Usually women My ministry would collapse if it wasn't for women I wouldn't have nothing Kelly tells her what to do If they don't listen Karina yells at them. I got the gals I got I got my posse women they come at him like night of the living dead and everybody just oh okay we'll we'll obey you know I need help soul ties are extremely dangerous what happens is the spirits in the guy are the same spirits in the gal and so there's a natural pull there's a natural pull see it's like somebody said well it was love at first sight Oh, when I hear that, oh Lord, I start spinning it. I put in one and spin, click, spin, click. It's love at first sight. Later on, it's the gates of hell at second sight. You can't even imagine the horror because it's an instant pull from the soul. It's a soul issue, soul to soul. See, you can feel somebody's soul. For example, if I got too close to you. See her batting her eyes already? I'm more than a foot from her. A soul and a soul can feel one another. And during the honeymoon, the female and the male souls bond. They knit together on, on honeymoons to become one flesh, so to speak. But if you get up in somebody's face, you can feel that person right in your face. Hey, you're in my space, they say. See? What they're really saying is my soul is sensitive up to this part. Don't get in there. Well, let's see how it works. The spirits in the one person are attracted to the spirits in the other person. They're similar. So there's a natural feel. See? Uh, the opposite is also true. If it's exactly the opposite, as soon as you meet somebody, you say to yourself, you know, I don't know. There's something about that person. Uh -uh. I don't. I don't like. I don't feel comfortable around them. What do you mean? You don't even know them. I know. I don't know. You know anything about them? No. But something. Uh, people used to call it years ago. Uh, they gave me the creeps. You ever heard of the creeps? You ever heard of that? It's not in many wedding vows, but it's, it's a <laughs> slang term used to describe just instantly. Well, that's a soul thing. There's something about that person I don't feel comfortable with. <laughs> Whoop. Ugh. God. Is this making sense? So there's a repelling sometimes, and there's a natural pulling. You know, I just met him. He's so, oh, something about it. It was just like, wow, I felt so comfortable with him. And by the way, other people may not have that same soul tie or pull in your family. So they're going to give you guff. Uh, well, wait a minute. You don't. How long have you been dating him? Oh, about two hours. Okay, now <laughs> hold on a minute. I met the guy. I ain't, honey. I ain't feeling. I ain't feeling that. I ain't feel. Well, they don't have the same spirits. They don't have the same soul connection to the guy that you had. See, so love at first sight doesn't apply to your mama. It only applied to you. See, so she's. Got feelers up, and she's saying, Red flag, red flag. What is she saying? It's a soul thing. That's why when this one comes up pregnant, and then they, years ago, the families used to force them to get married. Years ago. Like when I was young in the 50s, they would force them to get married because it was a, such a societal stigma on the person's life. If you had a kid without. Being married, I was like, oh my God, you're a piece of certified garbage. And people looked at you that way. Oh my God, I can't believe you had a kid out of wedlock. It's outrageous. These kids, look at these two. Look how young they are. Both of them young and pretty sitting there. Good grief. <laughs> they have no idea what I'm talking about right now. None. <clears throat> they have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Years ago, when I was young, if you married somebody of the opposite race, it caused a 
explosion in society. Any race, if you married somebody, particularly white and black, but any race, it was like, wow, people were looking at you. You went into Circle K. There wasn't one then, but I mean, they had stores. <laughs> you walked in there. People were looking at you. Holy crap. Who's that? Who are the, oh, that's crazy. Nowadays, nobody thinks stuff about it. Is this working here? Anybody have any questions? Did I make any mistake here? It, this is a soul issue, and the devil knows all about it much better than we do, and he takes advantage of it. He uses it. Uh, he uses it on people like this. Some women are only attracted to bad men. Later on, when they marry him, they, they're kicking themselves. I had a chance to marry Bill, the accountant. He was such a nice person. And he was nice to me. And, but I didn't have it. You know, I wanted the biker. See? That happens all the time. All the time. It happens in Hollywood all the time. They marry bad men, and it explodes on them later. They married bad guys. They got a soul tie attraction. And it turns into a disaster. Recognizing these people? Horrible marriages. All right. Now let's go over divorce here. Let me gulp for a minute. <laughs> now, I come out of the Assembly of God religion. And uh, in the Assembly of God religion, there was all kinds of different ideas about marriage, divorce and remarriage, okay? But generally speaking, most of the people I talked to, most of them, said that if you got divorced for any reason, it was a sin. If you got remarried, that was adultery. And you were in continuous adultery. So in other words, you were married to this person, didn't matter why you got divorced, then you married that person. From that moment on, you were a serial adulterer. You ever heard of that? Well, anyway, in the Assembly of God, we had that thing, and that's that bothered me. I'll tell you what bothered me, because we I had routinely seen people who were divorced getting blessed by God. And I'm thinking to myself, Wait a minute. Now I know that person. She just got filled with the Spirit. She's been divorced twice. She's married to, to this clown. And God's filled. If they're, if, she's, if they're serial adulterers, how are they getting these blessings from God? And so that, used, that bothered me. I didn't understand what was going on. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I saw other people who I knew were divorced and remarried. I knew them personally. And uh, they were getting blessed by God. And I'm thinking, Lord, what, what's wrong with you? I thought God had a problem because he was screwing up his word. Until I realized later I was the one that had the problem. Anytime you think God has a problem, oh, <laughs> as soon as you look at yourself, you get a revelation. <laughs> All right, let's do it now. I've already gulped. Apaluo is the Greek word for uh, divorce. And apostasion is the Greek word for the papers involving a divorce. Okay? So we have those today. Okay? Let's go. Now, this uh, apaluo means to get rid of somebody. Okay? And it's translated in the King James Bible as, most of the time, as put away. In one uh, case, it was translated divorce, which was a poor translation. Okay, so apoluo. If you want to get rid of somebody and you're married to them, you send them away. Okay, And Moses said, listen, you can't just send these people away. You have to give them papers showing that the woman is divorced so she can get remarried and won't starve to death. Because there was no economy back then. Everybody lived, the male did the 
usually labor jobs farming jobs whatever construction females cranked out the kids ran the home that was their society correct there wasn't uh, women that lived back then they didn't have that we have that they don't have that so Moses said look if you get rid of your wife Apaluo, boom, you punt her on down the road there are certain restrictions on that activity he said everybody with me and Moses said listen <clears throat> if you kick your wife down the road and get rid of her you've got to give her papers showing that you guys are formally or officially separated so that somebody else can marry her or she can marry somebody else is that making sense okay so that's the background Jesus found himself in when the Pharisees came to him and they said, Is it lawful for a man to apaluo, put away, punt, get rid of, throw out, whatever term you want to use, apaluo, his wife for every cause? Okay. Which is what they were doing then. They were doing what we do now. You can get divorced now for what they call irreconcilable differences, correct? Which is basically anything. You, you're, you don't wash your underwear enough. I'm out of here. That's well, illegal. <laughs> you can get divorced because he's he's got stinky underwear. Right? My underwear smells great. And I spray him and everything. Every cause, Jesus. This is Matthew 19. You following me? Jesus said, have you not read he which made them from the beginning made them male and female? He's quoting Genesis 2 and then for this cause a man shall leave his wife and By the way, this is one of the biggest problems for divorce. I run into in my marriage counseling sessions the mama's boy Jacob never left the parents Okay, when you get married, you're supposed to leave your parents yeah. folks you don't run back to mom and dad every time you got a problem with the marriage that only compounds the agony of your pathetic marriage. The Bible says, leave them, leave them behind. And then you do what? You, you're glued or you're permanently attached to the other person. That's what he's saying here to the wife. And that, that means the two of them shall be into one flesh. Okay, so you go on a honeymoon, you consummate the marriage, the bodies, one body enters the other body, you are now spiritually one flesh. Right? You're not physically one flesh. I mean you, you go to you can go here, but it's it's unity, it's like the divine trinity. You have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they're all one, but they're not one one one, they're one in unity. If that makes sense the same same way with husband and wife they're one in unity it doesn't have that for the kids correct it's only spoken of as the as the married couple one is into the other ice is the Greek word for into they are no more two but one flesh what God joined together let not man put asunder Matthew 19 right whoops excuse me they said, Jesus said, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, let you, Apaluo, get rid of your wives. But from the beginning, that was not the case. Following him? Okay. Then he says, Jesus said, I say to you. Now here you see the new covenant coming in. Jesus gave Moses the old covenant on Mount Sinai. And since he is the lawgiver, he is allowed to be the law changer. The Old Testament, Jesus changed to what I say. The law said this, now I say this. The, the I say is now number one. Whatever Jesus says, that's it. And nobody in heaven or on earth or in hell is qualified to contradict it. No one. No one contradicts it. That has half a brain. I say to you, 
whoever Apaluo gets rid of, dumps, throws out, punts his wife away. Unless he does it for what? Pornia. We learned this a few minutes ago. Now you see the staggering statement of Jesus Christ. The rules for divorce are now expanded to any sexual sin. Pornography is grounds for divorce. Fondling a child is grounds for divorce. Hello? Pornia is grounds for divorce. It doesn't say muikia. And if you marry somebody else that you got divorced for because, like I said earlier, you, you, don't, you don't like the stinky underwear, you are committing adultery, and that's in the present active continuous tense verb, moikatai, meaning that when you marry that person, it's continuous adultery. We'll clear that up in a minute. Okay? Everybody with me on what he says? What he's saying here? And we'll we'll fix it in a minute. How are we doing? Is anybody angry at me right now? Just raise your hand real quick. Karina, I just sensed something negative over here. Can you come on over and get them out of here? It, are you following me? Okay, so I married this gal. I'm a sinner. I'm not saved. I married this gal. We get we fight all the time. Boom, divorce. Then I married this gal, and now I start fighting with her. So I'm tired of fighting with this one, so I get married and fight with that one. I am now committing adultery with that other woman. This one, the new wife. In the eyes of God. I'm not saying it's society. Society's fine with it. No big no biggie. I'm saying in God's eyes, I'm committing adultery with that other woman because I married her. And I didn't get a legal divorce in the eyes of God. I was fighting. We were arguing about money, let's say, and it wasn't fornication. Is this making sense to people? Okay, let's go on then. Whoever marries her that is thrown out, got rid of, commits adultery. Okay, like I just said. We're fighting too much. I'm going to marry her so I can fight with her. That's adultery when I married her. And it stayed adultery. That's not a legal marriage in the eyes of God. Jesus expanded the Old Testament grounds for divorce. We just saw that. Jesus said, you heard it said of old time, you shall not commit adultery. Now back in the Old Testament, adultery was physically sleeping with somebody else's wife. And in Israel, Jehovah said, because there would have been a complete collapse of their society socially, you couldn't have this husband sleeping with that guy's wife. The whole system would have imploded. So Jehovah said, no. No. If you catch them, kill them. They're stoned. Why? Because A, the nation of Israel would have fallen apart, which it did many times through adultery and fornication, idolatry, and all kinds of things. But also, the demonic transfer. Demons are transferring from this person to that one, or from that one to this one. And once the demons started transferring in Israel, there was no way to stop it because they didn't have deliverance back then. We have it now, and we can stop it. So Jehovah said, hey, these people need to be stoned. Get rid of them because they're bad apples and they're going to infect other people. Right? It's like marrying the ba a bad person. That person comes in and infects the other family members. Correct? Okay. <clears throat> Same principle. Exodus 20. But I say to you, now the lawgiver is changing the laws again. I'm saying this. It's not just adultery anymore, physically sleeping with that person. Now, adultery can be experienced in the person's heart 
through lust if the person looks on a man or woman to lust after them okay epithmeo means to set the passions upon passionate lust that's adultery already and you never touch the person this is why pornography is so demonic and so desperately bad for families Arizona just submitted a bill they're trying to get it passed to have pornography uh, labeled a societal toxic societal like a plague Utah started it 11 other states followed Utah and now Arizona is following them people are turning on pornography because it's destroying people's lives it's ruining marriages it and that's not including the demonic aspect of it the state of Arizona wouldn't know a demon from that chair they're talking about the social ramification of pornography so bad they want to stop it now that's got to be bad if secular people want to stop it but the demonic aspect of it is incredulous you can commit adultery now never touching someone and Jesus said this is so serious it's similar to this Matthew 5 if your right eye offends you pluck it out for it's more profitable for the one of your members melos is the Greek word for a body part and arm, eye, ears, body part, any body part, melos. It's profitable that one of your body parts should perish, poke your eye out, and not your whole body be cast into the lake of fire. Gehenna is the Greek word for the lake of fire. That's where the devil gets thrown in in the end of the book of Revelation. Remember, there's an unknown angel comes down and grabs the dude and throws him in the lake of fire. And I've asked God several times, can I watch that? All I want to do is watch that. You have no idea. I'll be clapping and hooting. You'll see me there. Yeah. But anyway, it's better to lose an eye here, duh, than it is to end up in the lake of fire because the demons took you and your sin took you through lust of adultery. Okay, now let's explain it though. The devil, uh, particularly with men, if this was a men's group, uh, it would go better. The devil always condemns you for looking at someone romantically or finding them attractive or thinking they have a nice body or whatever. That is not adultery. If you look at someone and say, wow, that's a beautiful outfit. Great legs. Oh, look. He's packing. And then you go right on to something else that is not adultery because there's no lust behind it if that makes sense so don't let the devil condemn you saying oh you're a sexual pervert because you looked at his booty or her crotch or whatever it is guys look at everything since sinful men look at everything I used to look at everything about the woman I'd scan them from feet to hair. If the devil will condemn you, trying to get you to condemn yourself because you're committing adultery, you are not committing adultery if you find someone attractive. That's a perfectly normal human activity. And did that help? It says specifically lust. Correct? I just read it. Yeah, it doesn't find it doesn't say, well, what a beautiful outfit, or gosh, her hair. Boy, she's got a beautiful face. That happens all the time. It's on TV, it's on ads, it's on Hollywood, it's everything. It's, that's not adultery. But if you are lusting after that person, like in pornography, and you're watching the porn, and you're masturbating to porn, and you're focused on that person, that is lust, and that's literally as if you had slept with that person in the eyes of God, not our society. It's fine with our society. I'm talking about the good Lord, how he looks at it. But just find somebody attractive is not a sin. See, I get compliments all the time from my great shirts that I wear. 
from both men and women that doesn't mean I'm gay or they're gay the guys are looking at me. Hey, Mike looks great <laughs> That's that's not fornication or adultery Okay Am I making sense? Yes. There's got to be lust behind it lust That's what's what makes it a sin All right, let's take a look in eternity everyone faces judgment okay sinners go to the great white throne judgment and they are found guilty and they spend eternity on judgment and in hell Christians all go to the judgment seat of Christ okay so what you've done with your life here as from the moment you were born again is switched over from the great white throne judgment to the judgment seat of Christ when you got born again you got out of that system of going to hell now you have to give an account for what you did with your life for Christ as Paul said whether it be good or bad okay the point is everything you did it as a sinner matters and everything you did as a Christian matters everything you do everything you say it all matters now we you may not think it matters because nobody's God's not standing here tonight. No, but in eternity it will all matter What kind of Christian life you live will matter and you'll give an account of it Every sinner gives an account of their lives It is appointed unto a man once to die, but after this judgment. However, let's take a case here, a famous one, if you're an older person. Some of you have never heard of her. But anyway, this woman here was, was a glamorous, worldwide known movie star. Elizabeth Taylor was her name. And she was addicted to love and a very sad person. She was loaded with demons and lived terrible depression. And uh, the devil really was hard on her. Well, he here's how he beat her up so bad first She married Conrad Hilton jr. The Hilton there He was a, a drunken psycho. They got divorced then she married another guy Michael Wilding That didn't go well uh, They got divorced This marriage here in the eyes of God was legit marriage number one Okay, this one here Michael Wilding was adultery Okay, she got rid of Michael Wilding and then married Mike Todd. And apparently, according to the, what I've read, this was the man she truly loved. He died in a plane crash. And then she married a guy named Eddie Fisher. Eddie Fisher was married to a movie star named Debbie Reynolds. And they, were, they started having an affair. So Fisher left Reynolds and then married Taylor. Okay, so that is adultery. This adultery, that's adultery. Then she started to have an affair while she married Eddie Fisher with a guy named Richard Burton on a movie set of Cleopatra. They met there. Then they started having this affair. So then Fisher, she divorces Fisher and marries Burton. Okay, once again, adultery. Following this. And then here you have uh, John Warner, who was a politician. And he was the most corrupt person of all if you're a politician uh, They're the they're the pits of humanity and Then during drug rehab she marries a guy named Larry Fortensky Remember that and uh, I, th I think he was a truck loader or something, but it doesn't matter when you're in rehab It's open season in rehab <laughs> So she went from movie stars and millionaires to a guy loading trucks, but it doesn't matter it was all adultery except this one does anybody not understand what I just said Jesus said if you marry this person here and you get a divorce except for fornication that next marriage is adultery okay so she never got born again so all of her marriages except the first one were adultery because she married Men 
It was also fornication. All adultery is fornication. Not all fornication is adultery. Okay, let me get into some more trouble here. Now here you got Paula White and her husband Randy White. These were two ministers. Now they got married when they were both unsaved, and then they got saved, and then they got divorced for irreconcilable differences. That was a sin. Then she married uh, some kook. That was adultery. He never got married, uh, but the reports that came out about this guy were uh, not good. Okay. Here's another marriage, Christian marriage. They were both married before they got saved. Here they are, right? The Longs. Then uh, they got saved after they got married. No adultery. Then she finds out he's bisexual. And he's puttering around with teenage boys. Okay, that's what? Fornication, correct. That is not adultery. He likes male teenage boys. That's fornication. She then divorces him and can legally get remarried in the eyes of God because correct, it was fornication and that's grounds for ending a Christian marriage. All right. Benny Hinn and his wife, they got married when they were both born again. Then they got divorced. That was a sin. There was no fornication, supposedly. And then they got remarried. Okay. Hey, it's okay. Yeah. He forgave her or she forgave him, whatever happened. I'm assuming it was Benny's fault, you know. She probably got, my guess is, oh, he travels all the time, but she probably got tired of the comb over, couldn't take that anymore, but anyway, whatever it was, doesn't matter, it was a sin, but they both repented and they remarried, it's all good, God forgave them and no problem, grace covered it. What does Satan do to you, ladies, when you get divorced? As soon as them papers are filed, and sometimes before, what does the devil do? Anybody know? Yes, sir. There it is. There it is, honey. You're the tree. And there's the first dog coming in. He peeing on you. And baby, when you look up, See, before when you were married, nobody even looked at you. As soon as you're divorced, you go, man, I got to go to the gym. I got to lose some weight. I need to get my teeth fixed. And it, see, then the ex-husband looks at the wife and goes, dang. She never looked that good when I was with her. So then the devil starts bringing you other suitors. And I mean, it's, it's miraculous. It's supernatural, trust me. And these guys are all gasping losers. <laughs> Shocking losers. But the devil's manipulating you. He's smarter than you are. You've been in a bad relationship for a long period of time. Man, you are worn out. And all you really want is somebody to love you. And the devil goes, I'm going to send her some I'm gonna send her some of my boys. They're lovers. Yeah, they're lovers. They think you look great. Ooh, baby, you hot. Until this happens. And then all of a sudden, the real person comes out. Oh, the manipulator, the controller, the guy with the temper, the guy with the demons. Oh, my God. Then you get a divorce again. Guess what happens next? Oh, there's another dog laying there. They're all coming in on you, dear. It's all a setup. Okay, you know, uh, according to the scripture, now Paul takes over and tries to clarify some of this stuff. G granted, marriage is, is complicated. I understand that. I don't have all the answers either. 
paul says listen if somebody dies that's it you're free to do whatever you want but if you're a born-again christian you are not allowed to marry anybody who's not born again that's a total restriction well the woman has a soul thing going i'm going to convert him uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll convert him, honey. Yeah, that's going to be a big old conversion there. So then here's something I want to talk to you about about my counseling practice. It says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, this scripture in First Corinthians six, in my opinion, uh, is not complete. <clears throat> in my experience, only my experience. If you marry somebody who is not spiritually uh, on your area, you know, let's say you're an Episcopal and you marry a howling Pentecostal, that relationship is not going to work very well because he's going to want you down here rolling like a holy roller, and you're going to go, wait a minute, uh, I just want to read a prayer out of the handout in the morning and just pray quietly over here. And you're not going to, okay, unequally yoked can be a numerous things, okay? Uh, in my experience, as a marriage counselor, um, if you want to marry him and he's got five kids and they're all got felonies, each one of them, two, three, four, but yeah, that is an unequally yoked relationship. And always remember, love is no reason to marry somebody. Never, never doubt that. Love is a part of it, but that's not the only reason to marry somebody. If you marry somebody because you love them, you're going to take a beating. You're going to wish you had never taken Okay, so Paul's saying, look, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Some Christians are unbelievers. Let's say you're a you're believer. You believe in the fullness of the gospel, speaking in tongues, healing, deliverance. And let's say your husband was a Lutheran. Well, he's not going to go for that. So there's going to be a spiritual imbalance in that relationship. It's not going to flow smoothly. So when I do my marriage counseling thing, I I look at unequally yoked a little different than this. I see what Paul's saying, and of course he's right, 100% right. Obviously he's right. Everything he said's right. But you know, there's other things about being unequally yoked you need to consider if you're going to marry somebody. Correct? Yeah. You, you you your sex drives here, and you marry somebody who's got lust demons, who's just, who wants sex every night, and. You can last about two weeks uh, getting it every night. And after about two weeks, ooh, could we take a night off, honey? And pretty soon that starts to wear on you, see? Because you're not sexually, unequally yoked sexually it can be just as disastrous as anything else. I mean, drive you nuts. See? And he gets frustrated and he then the devil starts, hey, hey. The devil talks to your husband. Hey, your wife doesn't find you attractive. She doesn't want it every night. Well, she did when we were dating. Okay, there you go. Now, see, you were fornicating and committing adultery when you were dating, transferring spirits. You already set the marriage up for a total loss. Now you're taking a beating. Hello? I told you I didn't have any time. I just had to be blunt and stuff. And you set it up. Now you're going to pay a horrible price for what you've done. So the devil's going to come to him. Hey, she's not attracted to you anymore. Sally at the office was flirting with you yesterday. She's ready. See? And all of a sudden, bang, they're having an office affair. Why? My wife doesn't put out. Okay? It's not that she's not putting out. It's that she's worn out. There's a difference between putting out and being worn out. Hello? So if you're unequally yoked sexually, you're you bought the farm of misery. In our society here in America, divorces are terrible because we don't have premarital counseling requirements. 
it's all optional you're not allowed to tell somebody what to do here in America and to me if they were going to come up with a law of you have to have premarital counseling that to me I'm not trying to tell you what to do in my opinion based on my background counseling that it to me would be a productive law of course they'd screw that law up too but I mean if you required people to have pre marital counseling wow you'd cut the divorce rate down just my god the first day after you filled out the forms you'd have a lot of relationships breaking up immediately and they'd ask all those personal questions right. how, how many times a week do you want sex what about money what about kids child rearing issue and all these important issues are on that form and you check this stuff off then you swap it then you look at it whoa I didn't know he felt that way I didn't know he wanted that I didn't boom praise God you got out of there you know run for it jump out of the boat leap out of the plane my God jump off the mountain right I mean the first couple of days your life would have been safe but because it's only an option and nobody ever does it they all go because they're in love er, <laughs> Boom divorce nightmare on Elm Street everybody moves to Elm Street Hello If I'm too blunt, you know, please forgive me, but I'm trying to help somebody right now Okay uh, Let's have another pop quiz. Let's say that you know somebody who's engaged to an unbeliever and they're a Christian What should they do? Dumping Right. What if they're living with a guy? What should they do? Move out. Uh, no. Or if you're living with an unsaved husband, what do you do? Well, no, that's a debatable subject. I, there's no quick answer for that one. Okay. You're dating an unbeliever. Stop it. You're looking for a spouse. Quit. God Almighty. Listen, the Holy Ghost created the universe. It didn't evolve. There was no such thing as a big bang. That's all a pack of lies. He just sat down and said, I'm going to do something incredible, like he always did. He just filtered the universe together. How did he do that? If he's able to filter the universe together, he can find you a husband. Amen. You didn't hear me. You say, well, I don't know about that. God, finding a husband, that's a miracle. If the Holy Ghost can put the universe together, for God's sakes, He's able to find you a compatible man of God. I'm telling you right now. So do not choose your husband. If you're divorced, stay divorced and wait for God to bring you a, a nice, perfect fit. You want a pair of pants that fits. You want a husband that fits with you emotionally, sexually, spiritually, mentally, socially. You want somebody that fits with you. Am I correct? I'm reading your mind right now. But if you choose again, <laughs> Brother Mike will be spinning. You got Brother Mike spinning again. You you chose your own husband. I'm praying. Please land on the one that's full. Please land. You're dating your ex-husband. You, uh, in my experience, not telling you what to do. Uh, this, these don't go well. They do not go well. Here's the, here's what happens. You, particularly in a long-term marriage, <clears throat> you're married. You don't get along well, so you split up. See. And while you're split up, you're no longer arguing. So you're not scoring well. You're not scoring well. Loneliness seeps in from the devil. Hey, you don't have anybody. And you guys are getting along great now, right? Well, you're getting along great because you don't see them. Okay? It's hard to fight with somebody when they're not around. If you're fighting with someone that's not around, we're looking at another issue, probably schizophrenia. Show up here Thursday nights at 7 o'clock and come into this room here. <laughs> sit in that chair. So then they go, they start doing the friends with benefits thing, and they start kind of socializing a little bit, or they watch a movie together, something like that. And then it starts going, and boom, then there's, a, then there's an explosion. Something happens again. They get in a fight like they used to over a subject they used to get, a 
rearing the kids spending money uh, time spent with this going there and doing that there's a million different issues and then you have this come back the other boom come back the other boom and it's a bat normally I I try to be very careful with those analyze them carefully and then if I if I see it going bad I try to get it to because that's just me and that's not God I'm just talking about what I'm doing okay I don't have all the answers for everything okay or you're having an office affair you just love the guy that's adultery stop that unless it's the same sex then it's fornication okay then it's lesbianism is fornication not adultery okay how's that going you pass that quiz all right nobody's ran out or we've had a couple of people run out but normally during these things I get five or six run now so I'm doing very well right now let's focus on something really horrible which we see all the time here I see it all the time transfer spirits if you are intimate with another person who has spirits those spirits can transfer into your body okay Whoever commits adultery lacks understanding. They destroy their own soul. Not the other person, yours gets destroyed. How does that happen? Well, the spirits transfer over and you get soul wounds, dishonor, disgrace, and your reproach will not be wiped away. Translation, it's not easy to fix. It says, uh, your bodies are melos, body parts of Christ. Should I take the members of my body that are body parts of Christ and take those body parts and make them a member of a horne, a promiscuous woman. And Paul says, for God's sakes, no, do not do that. You do not take your body parts and make it a member of a horne, promiscuous person. He says, Fugo, run away, take off and run from what? Fornication, not just adultery. Fornication, every sin a man does is outside, ectus, outside your body. Okay, but he that does what? Commits fornication, not just adultery. Pornea sends ice into his own body. And that's exactly what happens. The spirit transfers into the other person's body. <clears throat> and then when the transfers can occur very easily for these types of activities they're almost 100% transfers and in the secular world we learned that a parent who sexually abuses a child statistically that child will probably grow up as a child abuser child abuser okay they in the secular world we explain that behaviorally and culturally and socially now that I got the truth from God it's a spirit transfer if I abuse this child the lust spirits one of them in me or more transfers into the victim so in the Roman Catholic Church, you have all these priests and bishops fornicating with these kids. They then grow up with these spirits transferred from the priests. And so they have spirits of depression and, and loneliness and suicide ideation and all kinds of things. That's caused by these priests transferring demons into these kids. That makes sense. And so they end up with all kinds of emotional and spiritual problems later in life. Hatred, self-hatred, hatred of God, hatred of the church, very common emotion. Any of these sexual sins in your past, you're not doing them now, but if you did them in your past when you were a sinner, you have probably are infected with them right now. Because once you get saved, you don't automatically get delivered. In the same way, you don't automatically get healed. Just because you became a born-again Christian, you don't automatically get healed. You don't automatically get delivered. The demons can stay in your body even though your spirit man became renewed and you became a born-again Christian. Is this making any sense? 
Yeah Living on the down low that's that's <clears throat> a lot of guys have kind of secret sex lives on the side uh, some of them uh, The same sex stuff they putter around with it. a lot of times it's bartering uh, I've had people come in and say they Did certain sex acts for drugs or money or this or that Yes, ma'am Oh prophetic groups Huge transfer spirit groups you get what they do is they get you in these prayer tunnels and Everybody stands on the outside and then the people going through there get prayer and then these people are putting their hands on them I've had hundreds of people come to me picked up demons like that okay. You never you never let anybody put their hands on you. Here's a pr here's a prayer tunnel fire tunnel something like that extremely risky, okay this person here going through the prayer tunnel has no idea what that guy was doing two days ago. He could have been on porn, as far as you know. This guy could have just committed adultery two weeks ago. Does that, does that make sense? It, you don't know these people. And they're all imparting and downloading stuff into you. And one of the things they download is spirits. Extremely dangerous. Never did that. Never go into religious facilities. Had a bunch of people over the years come to me picking up spirits uh, Going into a Buddha temple. I'm just going in to look well, you know, that's risky Okay, you're playing on the devils. That's Satan's business at a Hindu temple that that's satanic yeah. Christian going into a Jewish synagogue risky Risky, yeah. Judaism's loaded with demons. In fact, we'll get to that right here. There's actually a secular term for it, psychiatry. It's called the Jerusalem syndrome. All these Christians and people go over to unsaved people go over to Jerusalem. Can't wait to get to Jerusalem. They don't realize that's the most demon-infected city on the planet. They got everything there. Huge Orthodox presence huge Catholic presence huge Judaism Muslims All over the place every demon in the world's over there. I've had a couple dozen people come see me to get deliverance from the Jerusalem center They went over on a missions trip They went into all the trinket shops and went in the Arab shop looking at stuff for I didn't buy anything You don't have to buy anything friend the devil don't need you to buy anything you already bought it when you walked in there. It wasn't what you think. You bought the farm. Spirits transferred into them. The hotels over there. You have you can't even believe the people that was in that hotel before you were there. You wouldn't even believe it. It's common to have strange spiritual things happen in Jerusalem. And they and the churches here, they almost boatload them over there. They can't wait to take people to Jerusalem. They can't wait to get baptized in the Jordan River. Can I get there? I'm loading the gun again. Oop. You know, Jerusalem syndrome. I'm putting two bullets in. Oop. That is so bad and so dangerous. Do not go to Jerusalem. There's no need for you to go to Jerusalem. Listen, the new Jerusalem lives in here. You don't need the old Jerusalem. That's a bunch of desert. That place looks like a rat hole. The new Jerusalem. <laughs> Gorgeous And you have that living in here Holy Ghost built the new Jerusalem some people built the other one Yep, I'm in trouble <laughs> You go to a home group listen if you know don't know somebody in that home group don't let them put their hands on you There's so many kooks at home groups. You wouldn't even believe it Wait a minute. Yes, you would They are whacked out Be careful when you go to a home group a lot of good people in the home group a lot of infected people in the home group Just be careful as grandpa said it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so just don't risk it Can I pray for you sister? Well, I don't know you but yeah, you can pray for me, but don't put your hand you can pray for me over there See prayer works over here 
prayer works anyway. You don't have to put your hand on somebody. Oh boy, don't don't sit around praying with these people who want to astral project and go somewhere and pray for somebody or go to visit heaven or go to the courts of heaven. That's all familiar spirit stuff. That stuff will transfer into you in a second. And you'll come down with an illness or something you won't even believe. You'll be calling me a few months later. Brother Mike, I need to come in and see you. Courts of heaven. What? Listen, to make money, these people on TV have to keep coming up with something new. If they don't come up with something new, you ain't going to buy the old. We're Americans. We want new stuff. Everybody wants something new. Right now, the courts of heaven, that's old. It's old. That came out three years ago. It's already old. We need a new one. They'll come up with another one. Yeah. I'm, I'm not familiar with this, but I know that Frederick has helped save people that are coming into the church and praying for their loved ones. <laughs> yeah. Is that what that means? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh -uh. It's, it's all spiritual gobbledygook. Somebody just made it up. Huh? No, of course not. And just, there is when you pull it out of context, then you push it around and you can come up with anything. That's how they come up with this courts of heaven stuff. But again, the people that are in the courts of heaven are also into these other things, other spiritual things that are very dangerous. They're kundalini spirits, familiar spirits. They'll transfer right into your body. They get sick real quick. It's going to happen. If you have symptoms of transfer spirits after having sex, here are the symptoms. Now, this may have happened to you years ago. Do you have a personality change? Did you have a change in your irritability level or your impatience? Impatience level. Did you start having problem with men? Did you start having strange anxiety or start having panic attacks? Did your sex drive change? Did you develop urges for the same sex that you keep under control? That happens a lot after children are abused, sexually abused. They have strange urges. The spirits enter the kid's body and then they develop same sex urges or trans urges. Oh my God, I'm not a, I'm not a man. I'm a woman. I don't feel like I'm, it's all de demons. That whole trans thing is all spiritual. None of that stuff's real. Am I am more angry now? Temper issues. Did your dream life change? Do you have nightmares? Do you see shadows in your room? Are you having night visitations in your bed? Those spirits come in, the ones that hover over you or they stand by the bed or they, sometimes they fondle you. So you can sense something in the room. Sometimes you can see a shadow, something in the corner. <clears throat> yeah. Strange illnesses pop up for no reason. Can't get rid of them, stuff like that. So symptoms of a transfer. What is a bastard curse? Well, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 23, it says, A bastard shall not enter the congregation of the Lord, even in the tenth generation. What was a bastard back then? It was a kid born out of wedlock. A kid born from rape, uh, something like that. They weren't allowed into the uh, temple at all for any reason. And uh, the devil still gives us bastard curses. It's usually the spirit of rejection. He's the most popular demon for dysfunctional families is this demon here, rejection. I see him more than any other spirit in my counseling practice. Were you born out of lust? You were an oops from a one night stand or something. Were you conceived too soon after your marriage? Okay, There was a quick pregnancy after your marriage. You're not a bastard child, but your parents can't financially take care of you now, or they're both in school, or their circumstances are not uh, attuned to raising a child this early. They wanted to wait, and oops, you popped up. So there's negativity and rejection on the child. Uh, where you can see, too, did the mother get pregnant too quick after this baby? Pregnant, and then bang, pregnant again. Okay, and the mother sometimes will reject the child or have bad feelings or emotions for the child because of that. 
or they were born the wrong sex. Did your dad want a boy? Uh, were you divorced or pregnant and during a divorce process? You know that reconciliation thing I was talking about earlier. Coming back, they split up. Now they're getting along good. Click, but they're still getting into war. They're in the process. That happens a lot, believe it or not. They accidentally get pregnant. Then their the child's rejected, or you're an unplanned birth, <clears throat> or your parents. Uh, got pregnant and then they decided well, let's talk about getting an abortion and All these things negative things about the fetus about the child are used by spirits to attack the child in the womb They can attack the rejected child in the womb or in as a baby Okay Demons can give kids SIDS and stuff like that trying to murder the child because they were rejected in the womb and nobody wanted them if you had a really hard birth and the child was really painful or there's all kinds of things went wrong Sometimes children get blamed for that Okay, the mother may be afraid before you're born that you're not going to come out the sex dad wants a boy so he can play baseball with him and the mother develops anxiety Fear of a child being disabled fear of childbirth pain Fear of birth complications. Fear of parents or in-laws wanting to take over the child or control the child too much or spoil them too much or whatever it is. Sometimes in-laws cause a lot of problems in marriages and generate fear in the mother. The extreme disappointments while the mother's pregnant can transfer to the child. Gaining weight, body changes. That stress can transfer to the child. Okay. However, the bastard curse got nailed to the cross of Calvary. There ain't no bastard curse anymore when the blood is applied. First Corinthians chapter one. one. Now, <clears throat> let me talk to you for a second, and then we'll close. Some of you were, to use my granddad's old saying. When you were young, you were uh, sucking the hind tip. You never heard of that, have you? Well, that means the runt of the litter doesn't get the good breasts on the dog. Yes, it's you know eight or nine pups, and the runt is trying to get the thing at the end. Or you were you were born out of due season. Or you were rejected in the womb or uh, Your dad left because he didn't want to be a father at that time. So he bolted uh, Or you got the short end of the stick when you were young Are you a second fiddle when you were young? Does that apply to anybody here you wasn't the hot item in the family some other kid was you know your sister was prettier than you are you're your other sister was a lot smarter than you. Your brother was a great athlete. You weren't. And you had this sense that you were a second fiddle in the family. You were deficient in some way. The other siblings were here and you were kind of down here. If any of that applies to you or anybody on YouTube, <laughs> you are the most fortunate person you've ever met. Check this out. First Corinthians chapter 1. You see your calling brethren not many wise men after the flesh and not many mighty and not many Yuganas royal people are called by God God doesn't call many of those people and the reason is most of those people are kind of stuck on themselves you know, They're more they're more apt to see themselves as accomplishing something and they're more more apt to see themselves as you know kind of entitled to something or something. See, God doesn't think like you do. He doesn't see you the way you see yourself, and your family saw you. Your family saw you as you know somebody to be buried in the backyard. When God saw them get the shovels, they were chasing you with them. The Holy Ghost said, "I don't want the other family. I want that one." The one they're chasing with shovels. You don't understand. If you're at the bottom of the barrel, 
God is more interested in you than the people at the top of the barrel. Am I helping anybody? God has chosen, not you, not anybody else. God chose the pup on the hind tip, the, the person at the bottom of the barrel. Did somebody have to scrape you off the bottom of the barrel when you were young? I hope so. Because you are in a fantastic spot tonight. This is one thing the devil doesn't want you to know. He spent sometimes a lifetime running you down and trashing you and saying negative things about you. Making fun of your looks, your body, your intelligence, your education. He's been trashing you from day one. What he doesn't want you to know is everything he did to you when you were young was a blessing. He wants you to know that. Because God chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He chose the weak things. See? He chose the runt of the litter, not the strong one. You don't understand. Esau came out and Esau was the bigger, stronger brother. But God chose the other one. Your family chose the other siblings. The prettier daughter, the smarter daughter, the smarter brother, the athletic brother. You were sucking on the hind here. You were the runt of the litter. If you were the runt of the litter, you've hit the lottery tonight. No, you don't understand. You're not getting it. God didn't chose the bigger, stronger brother. He chose the weaker, smaller brother who came out holding the heel. Father chose that one. And he told Rebecca. He chose the second son. Culturally, familially, it was Esau. He had the birthright. He had the blessing coming to him. But God chose the other one, the runt of the litter. What do you do that for? Well, he wants to confound the devil, that's for sure. God chose the base things of this world, the things which are despised. Exotheneo is a Greek word that means held in contempt. You've been held in contempt by so many people over the years, it's not even funny. They're lying down the block who had negative thing to say about you. You don't, you don't get it, do you? God chose you first over the beautiful daughter, the smart daughter, the great athlete, the good student. Oh, yeah. You had those in your family, but you wasn't one of them. Uh uh. No, you weren't. And I can tell by looking at a few of you, man, you were way down the ladder. And you don't even know that God starts at the bottom of the ladder, He don't start at the top. You were chosen first because somebody held you in contempt. God chose you. Why? Because he's going to bring down to nothing the things that are. People that are not great and don't have royalty are less likely to take credit for things God does. They're more likely, statistically, to be grateful for benefits from God than somebody who is used to getting everything they want. Rebecca. Rebecca got everything she wanted. She was drop dead gorgeous, smart, a manipulator. God already told her it was Jacob, but no, she didn't believe him. She took matters into her own hands and manipulated the whole thing. The Holy Ghost would have had uh, that happened without her button her nose in, but she was a manipulator and a control freak and she was motivated by fear Fear that he wouldn't get his portion even though father had already chosen him 
You don't understand. There's no reason for you to have fear anymore because you've already been chosen by God. He saw the other ones ahead of you and chose you first. If you were at the bottom of the barrel, that's where he looks first. Excuse me. Oh, there's one way down there. I want that one. Oh, when you grew up, if you had this kind of concept that, you know what? I suck. That is so wonderful. I hope you sucked. <laughs> because you were chosen first when everybody thought you sucked. You didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. You know why? You hadn't read this yet. God chooses the ones that suck first. Well, you don't understand, Mike. You know, I, my brother's a doctor. I mean, I, I flunked my GED. Your brother was not chosen first. He was chosen second. You and your GED were chosen first. You don't understand, Mike. You don't get it, Mike. Mike, you don't understand. You must be. you tripping on me now, Mike. No. I grew up fat and ugly. Okay, you're fat and ugly, and if we took a vote, yeah, you'd, you'd get the vote. <laughs> no offense. God chooses the fat and ugly ones over the beauty queens. Let's hang on. Okay. <laughs> oh, Brother Mike, you're not getting it. When I was growing up, you know, my mother kind of saw me as a loser. Oh, that's that's music to my ears. I am so glad. You are in line for a miracle from God. You are in line for the gifts of the Spirit. You are in line for a Holy Ghost destiny. You don't see it? Oh, man. If you don't see this, then I've failed tonight. You have to know something funny about all them superstar faith healers over the years? I've, I've read all their biographies. And, you know, when I read something, I would naturally bring my background into it, as anybody would. So I kind of looked at, looked at it like a counselor, something like that, when I read it. I read them all. A. A. Allen, Smith Wigglesworth, Mary Wordsworth Etter, Catherine Coleman, Amy Simple McPherson, Ella, Jack Coe, Bill Seymour, all these men and women that were used by God, superpowered saints, so to speak. They saw untold numbers of people saved, healed. As, Anybody else read any of this stuff? I'm the only one. I can't be. Did you read their backgrounds? Every person I just mentioned to you, do you know what they were? To sum it up real quick, a group of sucks. A giant train full of losers by society standard. Society looked at every one of those people I just mentioned, all of them. Now, I didn't mention John Lane because he's an exception, obviously. All those people used by God incredibly with staggering power, gasping fruit, shocking fruit. I say, well, Brother Michael found those people failed and they had flaws. Duh. You looked in a mirror like God chose the person with the flaws. A. A. Allen was a certified full-blown alcoholic by sixth grade, pounding down moonshine by the gallons as a sixth grader. What was going to happen to him? He was going to die and go to hell. No. See that scripture? God chose 
the foolish things of this world to confound the wise There wasn't a miracle that guy never saw I mean he saw every miracle in the book Hello You know what he was when he was a kid a gasping loser People were like jaw-dropping when they look at him. He's a total loser He'll never amount to anything Was he flawed and did he fail sure of course God chose him because he had all those flaws See the devil keeps telling you you're not qualified and you're not good enough and you haven't measured up and you don't know enough and you know he's got a laundry list of, of your deficits. And he'll be happy to tell them to you anytime you want to hear them. And every one of them things on that list he knows is what drew the Holy Ghost over to see you. Oh, you don't understand, Brother Mike. You don't get in the all oh, my family, man, they're crazy. My parents are nuts. My brother and sister, they're all mentally ill. Every all the other ones are in prison. Oh, perfect. That's great. Congratulations. You've been chosen. You're the polar opposite of America's Got Talent. Okay. Simon Cowell chose the Americans Got Talent guy. God chose the person they couldn't even get on their show. I'd rather be called by God than Simon Cowell. Yeah, you know, maybe it's just me. What you got to do to be healed tonight? Well, you got to get your soul healed. You got to face it. Will you do that? If you do it, you'll get healed. King David said, Lord, heal my soul. If anybody needed their soul healed, it was that guy. Wow, he was jacked up. What? Brother Mike, what happened there? Remember the runt of the litter? That was King David. He wasn't even part of the family. His parents didn't include him in nothing. You know what he got to do? Sniff sheep all day. Do you have any idea how old that gets sniffing sheep? Trust me on that one. Yeah. Well, trust me on that one. I got relatives in Illinois who are farmers. They're all farmers. Two, three, four generation farmers. Sheep stink. She, sheep are, sheep are not. No. Uh -uh. No, sheep are not fun. A, they're dumber than a box of rocks. I mean, just gasping stupid. They smell like somebody dug them up. They poop and pee right, right when they're talking to you. <laughs> they got no no social manners at all. They're stupid. And they'll just follow anybody they sense can get them to some King David all day long. Oh geez uh, Out with the sheep Jehovah said to him thus saith the Lord. I took you from the sheep coat and I made you king of Israel You don't understand you out with the sheep you are in line for a miracle from God all the other brothers never heard from him again King David uh, Why God choose him he was flawed Duh, that's why he chose him That's why he chose him King David would always repent after he screwed up He'd screw up like you can't even believe he put the screw in screw up this guy was a monstrous goof But as soon as he failed he would break and come back to God and the Jehovah loved him for it He was the runt of the litter he was the bottom of the barrel Yeah, the great prophet came and said oh, let me see that son. No, that's not the one let me see that one No, that's not it. that's what you got any more sons Well, yeah, we got this piece of crap son. He's out with the sheep sniffing sheep butts <laughs> Oh, that's great. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, you got some guy out with the sheep. Okay, that's the lowest job in the family. That's, nobody wanted that job. Would you? 
sit around talking to sheep and <laughs> hey, can't you do that in private <laughs> can't you go in somewhere and they follow you that's a worse job to have at watching the sheep don't you get it that's a fun day then you got to put your life on the line to save one of them my god a bear shows up what are you nuts I mean I'm on the first train out of there take your pick of the sheep dude no, you can't do that. You got to fight off a bear. Where do I apply for that job? Because I'm going to the other building. I don't want that job. Yeah, well, go bring me the sheep coat kid. He walked in and Jehovah said, that's the one. You don't understand. You're the one. You're the one. You're the one. One too big a sinner. That's why you're the one. Okay. Well, I'm a shocking failure. Good. Congratulations. You get a miracle from God. You must cast all your care upon him tonight, for he Melo, he is concerned about you. He is concerned about you. Thus saith the Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are what? Copayo. This is very typical for a, a mother, a woman, exhausted from hard work. Very common. You are. Fortizo. Overburdened. I will give you rest. Says the Lord. Matthew 11. You may have been betrayed, betrayed really bad in your past. God can heal your soul. You may have all kinds of show, soul scars. Your husband cheating on you. You left with somebody else. Foreclosures. Divorces. One of your children got killed. The other one's an addict. The other one keeps having babies. Look, all these heartbreaking disappointments with children. Children are massive, can be massive heartbreakers. You may have that tonight. You can be healed. You could have your heart shattered from a trauma or something from your childhood. That can be healed. Maybe somebody walked out on you and left you. Hey, Jesus knows exactly how you feel. They walked out him and left him at the cross there. His mother and one guy was there. That was it. Imagine that. By, by society's evaluation, Jesus was a shocking failure. He was a massive failure. He spent three or four years in the supernatural ministry. And at the end, there was two people standing there. That's not TV preacher stuff. Okay. TV preacher wants lots of people. Okay? We need big crowds. You got a small crowd, nobody likes you, nobody follows you. Hey, <laughs> the Holy Ghost is following you. And he's saying, Hey, I got a supernatural miracle waiting for you. If I renovated A. A. Allen, if I renovated <coughs> Sister Etter, she, you know, she buried 11 of her 12 kids. Buried 11 out of 12. Imagine that. Her brokenness was what the Holy Ghost needed. To dispense his incredible power. The Holy Ghost is drawn to broken people. People who are arrogant. And prideful. He doesn't even get near them. Pride and arrogance. Rebellion and bitterness. Quench the spirit of God. And his power. Sister Edna was a broken woman. She understood other people. She had lost so many children. She had empathy for you and compassion for you. And the Holy Ghost flowed through her like a river. Why? She was broken and humble. She never took any of the credit. See, people that are down and out are less likely to steal God's glory when he does something than people who are royalty. People that are Rebecca, spoiled. Rebecca was spoiled. She didn't listen to God. She took matters into her own hands. See, well, I can do that. I've been doing that all my life. I get my way. Look at me. I'm smart. I can out talk you. I can out think you. I can control you. No, the Holy Ghost doesn't want you to be in control. He wants you to let Him be in control. That's how He moves when you allow Him to be in control. Sister Edder, let Him be in control. She was a broken person. 
the great John Lake saw so many people healed. It was unbelievable. How? He saw almost every member of his family die of sicknesses. <clears throat> Imagine that. Almost every member of his family, he had to watch them die. <clears throat> See a pattern here? There's a pattern there of God choosing these people and building them up. You ever notice that some people that are total losers, when God renovates them, their testimonies are fabulous. Your failures and your losses in life actually are your greatest assets. You filed bankruptcy, you can have compassion for somebody that's going through it now. You've been sick. You can have compassion for somebody else sick. Your kid's been killed. You have, can have compassion. Don't you see it? God goes to the bottom of the barrel and renovates them and brings them to the top of the mountain. That's how he does it. That's how he sees it. He doesn't see like we see. Let's close. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said. And how? He anointed me to preach the Gospel to the poor. What is the gospel? Evangelion is glorious good news. What is this good news? Well, the first thing he mentions is what? Broken-hearted people, usually women. And to preach deliverance to the captives. And set at liberty those that are throttled, crushed. What's he talking about there? Emotional pain is more devastating and worse than physical pain. Physical pain is not as bad as emotional pain. If you break a leg, yeah, that hurts. But that thing will heal in some respects. You lose a child in a car accident, 40 years from now, that wound is still there. Somebody mentions that person, and the mother goes, she gets choked up 40 years later, 30 years later. See, if you have 10 kids, and one of them's dead, you still have 10 kids. You never just have nine. There's 10 kids, but one of them's not there. If you have 10, 15 kids and two of them are dead, you still have 15 kids. There's just two of them not here. They don't go away. That pain can be lifted out of your soul by the Holy Ghost. He's the one and only. He's the heartbreaker healer. I've seen him do it all the time. Yeah, that is my privilege. To see Am I right? Are you crushed? Hey, you can start over tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Any questions before we close in prayer? Nobody? All right. All right, let's go. Uh, we can, hey, uh, can you go in and get the guys and bring them in? Tell Robert to bring them in. All right, let's pray. Father God, there are some women here tonight who are, who have broken hearts and pain on their soul pain in their hearts and they they have never been healed and that pain is still here it's still with them and it's not supposed to be here anymore that pain's not supposed to be here anymore they're supposed to be healed All right All right now stand on your feet and come down here so I can pray with you. if you've lost a child no parent is supposed to bury a child. That's not the way it's supposed to go. But the devil disrupts families and he kills children. Come down here if you've lost a child. God's going to heal you tonight. Anybody here lost a child? Anybody here still got a wound on their soul from losing a child? You love that person and they died and you couldn't believe it. Two people, one people. 
one person okay thank you jesus you still got a wound on your soul from somebody who died all right now come down here if you had a parent unexpectedly die not somebody who lived in 90 and died of old age i mean somebody got killed in a car wreck you loved your mother something happened to her somebody got murdered somebody got hurt Come down here so you can be healed. You get healed first tonight. Your dad died unexpectedly, dropped dead. Okay, two. Anybody else? All right. All right, now stand up right now. If you got a ex spouse, an ex husband who stabbed you right in the back and betrayed you. And when you you forgave him already, but when you think about him, you got bad feelings about him, emotions. A spouse, come on up here so you can get healed. We'll get rid of that spouse tonight. The Holy Ghost will just lift him right out of there. And they'll lift him right out of there. I've been a counselor for thirty-seven years. I've never healed anybody. Never healed. I can't heal anybody. We're looking at the Holy Ghost to heal people. He's got the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's what heals people. That's what heals people. Not somebody like me. Not going to happen. Well, come on. Anybody else? Just admit it. You got to face it. You got a bad spouse, ex spouse that betrayed you, cheated on you, ran off with the money, ran off with the girl. Come on. Get rid of it tonight. Sorry about that. <coughs> Sorry. Get rid of it tonight, please. Let's do it. All right. Stand up and come down here. If you learned from childhood being the doormat or the trash can of the family, you learned to hate yourself. The devil was hard on you when you were a child. The other kids got all of their money and the glory and the attention and the love the other kids okay come on thank you Jesus. come on you were the runt of the litter like grandpa said you were the runt you were on the, the hind breast you didn't get what everybody else got you got shoved aside you got second fiddle okay god's going to heal you Come out, stand here, stand in front, please. You are not second fiddle to God, not by a long shot. In fact, He chose you first. The Word of God says it, First Corinthians chapter one. If you don't believe me, you can read it yourself. There are no runts of the litter in God's kingdom, and those do not exist. All right, last one. You picked up a transfer spirit. You slept with somebody. That you shouldn't even have said hi to or waved at. You picked up a transfer from somebody, either through sex or through a prophetic service or a church service. Come down here right now so we can get that thing out of there. Transfers are extremely dangerous. Transfer spirits. Anybody else? All right, we'll have the ministry team come down now. Thank you. You picked up a transfer. You went through a fire tunnel, and after that, you felt odd, like something was weird. You went to Jerusalem with a church group or a missions trip. You came back, something felt off. You were off. Somebody put their hands on you. Somebody prophesied over you, and you felt weird afterwards. Okay? Come on down, please. Right, thank you. If you need to leave now, we bless you and thank you for coming to the seminar. I apologize if I went too long. You know, let's pray for these. Now close your eyes now. Just close your eyes for a second and just take a big breath and try to relax, okay? Just relax. Okay, we turn the lights off so you can have some visual privacy. So you just want to relax. You know, nobody's staring at you. And nobody is criticizing you for anything at all 
Everybody here likes you. We want to help you. Thank you, Jesus. You were rejected as a child. Just relax. Just try to relax. Take a big breath. Just relax. There you go. Good. Big breath. Relax. Thank you, Jesus, for these women. Hallelujah. Women are more sensitive to God than men are, generally speaking. Obviously, there are exceptions. Relax a second. Yeah. Yeah. You got those insecurities in there. You got those insecurities in there. Right there they are. Insecurity. Take a big breath and relax for a second. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, right now, I'm asking you to enter their souls and remove this heartache from whatever it is a bad man a bad marriage a death in the family thank you jesus who died who was it my daughter your daughter first daughter. your first daughter what was her name faith oh faith that was beautiful raise your hands close your eyes thank you jesus thank you jesus you ready take a big breath faith come out Come on out. Just breathe. Let her go right now. Keep breathing. Come on right now. Somebody die in your family? Who was it? Your cousin. Your cousin? What was her name? Heather. What? Heather? His name? His name was what? Ever. Ever. Okay, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Ever. Come on. Let's go. Take a breath. Breathe. It'll come right out ever in the name of Jesus Her cousin died unexpectedly. There he is right there Let go. That's the Spirit of God touching you. Come on now. What happened to you, honey? Um, I was rejected when I was a kid my mom was by your mom. You were rejected as a kid You are you are God's first choice raise your hand She was rejected by her parents as a kid in first Corinthians chapter 1 it says she was God's first choice in that family thank you Jesus thank you Jesus spirit of rejection come on let, it, let her go let him go spirit of rejection come on out of there come out right now come on out come on all that anger and everything in there all of it has to come out tonight come on all of it what happened to you honey <clears throat> What was his first name? Oscar. Hmm? Oscar. Oscar, raise your hands here. Oscar, come on now. Raise your hand. Come on. Uh, come out of there. Every transfer spirit from Oscar. Yep. There it is. Come on out. What happened to you, honey? Only for praying. The father pastor prayed for me. And I have problems with my ex husband. And that man. Your husband? Yeah. What's his name? Uh, the, the man that was praying for my ex husband and for me is Ruben. Ruben? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Come out, devil. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Ruben, come on out of there. In the name of Jesus, breathe out of your mouth. Come on. Breathe like this. Come on. Take a big breath. Big breath. Come out, Reuben, right now. Come out of that body right now. Come on out. Come out, Reuben. Come out right now. Come on out right now. Come out, Reuben. What's wrong, honey? Who did it? My mother rejected me. What was her name? She told me she didn't love me. What was her name? Her name was Iris. Iris, come, raise, take a big breath. Oh, Iris, come on out of there. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' name. There she is. Let your tears go. Come on. Let your tears go. That's it right there. That's it right there. Come on. Let him go. Let it all go. At a girl. Come on now. Let it go. Come on. Let her go. Come out. Come on out. Come on. That right. Come out right now. Come on. Come on. Close your eyes. She's not gone. Breathe. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out, Mother. I love you, but I have to let you go now. I love you, but I let you go now. In Jesus' name, I'm letting you go. Come out. Come on out. I let my mother go. I let that rejection spirit come out of my body now. Go. Come out of my body right now. Go. Come on out. Come on out right now. Come on out right now. 
Hold that. Get out of there right now. Come out. Mother, come on out. Come on out, mother. Hold that. Come out right now. Get out of there. Your mother's coming out right now. There she is. Come on out. Here she comes. Rejection. Rejection. Come out. There it is. Rejection. Come out of her. Rejection. Come out. There it is right there. He's coming up right now. Come out of her throat. Come out of that throat. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on out. Mother. Come on out. Right now, go. Right now, go. Right now, go. Come out now, go. Come out. Self-rejection. Self-hatred. There it comes. Come on out. Right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Out. Get out of that body. Kundalini. Go. Come on out, Kundalini. Come out. Self-rejection. Self-hatred. Come out of me right now. Right now. Come out right now. Come out of my stomach. Every ugly man that ever touched me. Go. All the men. Come on out. All the men. Come out right now. All of them. There they are. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out there. Get out of that body right now, you bitch. Come on. Let's go. Come out, you bitch. Come out. Keep coughing. Come on out right now. Go. Come out. Come out. Get out of body. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Come out now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Satan, go. Come out. Self-hatred. 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 Come on out. Yes, come out. Self-hatred. 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 Oh, mother rejected me. Self-hatred. Get out of my body right now. Get out of my body right now. Anger, frustration. Bad man. Bad at God. Come on out. Go right now. Come on out quickly. Get out. Come out of there right now. Grief and sorrow. Come out of me right this second. Grief. Grief and sorrow. Come out. There you go. Come on out. Grief and sorrow. Transfer spirits from men. Out. Men, come on out. Right now, fornication, adultery, go. Come out in Jesus' name, go. There he is. Come out right now. Every man that ever touched me leaves me tonight. Come out right now, go. Spirit of fear, come out. Fear of being prayed for. Fear of deliverance. Fear, come on out. Right now, quickly. Fear, come out. Come on out. Get out of there right this second. I command my cousin's spirits to come out of me right now. Spirit of grief and sadness, come out right now. There. Keep, let your tears go. Come on. There you go. Don't hold back. Let it go. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come on out. There it is. Keep coughing. Come up. Come up right now. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her lungs. Come out of them lungs. Go. Lift. There he is. Lift out any spirit from church. Come out of this body right now. Church demons, go. Kundalini, go. Come out right now. Quickly. Spirit from church, go. What happened? Um, well, my ex-husband. Um, what do you do to we you? We were divorced. And, well, he cheated on me, but he said that I said, he was very like verbally abusive. And I said, mm -hmm. "Why did you treat me like that?" And he said there were demons yeah, him. telling him. To yeah. Be what was his first name? Robert. Robert. Okay. Ready? Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, do you see this beautiful woman standing here? She's got transfer spirits from Robert hiding in there. Hiding in there. And Robert is gone now, but he needs to leave here. He's not gone. He treated her with injustice. He treated her, he was unfair to her. He dishonored her. He cheated on her. He drove a wound right here into her soul. Now he's gone, but his spirits and his wounds are left here. Tonight, this woman of God is to be free. Take a big breath. Good girl. Hello. Come on out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Keep breathing. Come out of there. Ex-husband, come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there right now. Go. Come out. 
verbal abuse. Verbal. There he is. Come on out. Come out of there. Lift out of her. Lift out of her lungs. Right there. That was him. Come on out. Come out of there. Lift out. Come out. Every man that ever touched her who wasn't her husband, you come out too. Come out now. Come on out. Come on out. And there it is. Let your tears go. Come on. You're getting healed tonight. Come out. Come out of there. All the men go. All of them. Come out of her stomach. Come out of her chest. Come out of her lungs. Come out right now. Quickly. 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 Every time he cursed you. Come out. Every time he slept with another woman. Come out right now. There it is. Every ounce of grief. Come out. Grief and sorrow. Come on out. Come out. Get out of there. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out. I let my ex-husband go. I let all the men go. All of them. All of them. Right now go. I forgive all the women he slept with. I forgive them all. I release them all. Go. Come on out. Go now. Go now. Out you go. Come out, you rotten spirit. Come out. Come on out. Every transfer spirit from my husband. Come out of that body right now. I want my husband out of there tonight. All of them. All of his spirits. All the devils. All of them. I want them out now. Right now. All of them out. All of them out. Right now. Quickly. What do you need, hon? I mean, I came here to pray with her, but oh. I have an ex-husband. What's that his name? Amador. Amador. What did he do to you? Well, Come out. He committed adultery, and I forgave him, but I've never had a relationship after that, a successful one. Oh, now, when he committed adultery, did he come home and sleep with you after that? Yeah. He had was a child he? with another woman. Oh, and it was multiple times? It was only one he cheated on her, you, multiple times? Just once. Just once? That I know of. That he said? Yeah. <laughs> What's his name? Amador. Amador, okay. Now that, none of that stuff's true. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Amador, you transferred a spirit husband into her body, and he broke off every relationship after you. He broke off every relationship after you. You committed adultery. Every spirit from my husband has to come out tonight. You committed adultery, and that's grounds for divorce in the eyes of God, but you transfer something into me from the other woman, a spirit husband, and he took all my relationships. I want my husband out of my body tonight and his lover. I want them both out in the name of Jesus. I want them both out right now in Jesus' name. All of it. All that insanity. Come out. All of it. Every demon from your husband has to come out. He's massively infected. You know that. Come on. Get him out of there. All of them have to come out. All of them out. All of them out. What was his name again? Amador. Amador, you come out of my body right now. Every spirit from Amador, come out right now. Go. Come out of me right now, I said. Come out right now. Go. You speak in tongues? You don't speak in tongues? No. Uh, just repeat after me then, okay? Roba shata. Kelomasi. Benoma. Kolamala. Mondeo. Bashume Kulaba. You have any trouble with that? You have any trouble with that? Pretty easy. Okay, let's do it again only. Now you add some syllables on your own. Okay? And it just it'll just kind of kick and take off. Ready? Korava. Bando Shandomo Shabashima. Kolava Shete. Any syllable. There's no wrong answer. Amador, I want you out of my body now at any cost. At any cost. Say that. I want that spirit that's breaking off my future. He's blocking me. He blocks me. I want him out right now in Jesus' name. 
Shandor Rosita. Bola Baba. I just want to know if I could talk to you for a second. Yeah. It's my first time here. And um, I suffered with, you didn't begin any of the topics up, but you brought up some. I suffered really bad anxiety and panic attacks really bad. Then when that start? Yeah, after my heart attack in 2002. Oh, okay. And I cleaned through diet for like three days. Yeah. I was on life support and I've had this anxiety where I can't even like take the bus from like yeah. here to like 7th Street if I want. You a Christian? I was raised Catholic. Oh, okay. Come on up here. And now. Any syllable. What happened was uh, the spirit transferred from your husband into here, from her. They're called spirit husbands. And they get into your body and they claim you as their wife. So the woman dies an old maid. They break off every relationship all in the future broke Yeah, look at you That's what I'm saying you, you got to get him out of there now look at you You're pretty You're intelligent you're smart. I see you collating You've got a higher IQ, don't you? Yeah. Are you street smart too? You read people well? Huh? I guess. Yeah. Now, listen, when somebody cheats on you like that, you got low self esteem. Okay? That's ridiculous. You're attractive and you're intelligent. I see you. There's no reason this should be happening. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. And they transfer. You follow me? Now, hey, I was gonna ask if I could see you like by huh? yourself, or do you have a car or something? Or do I have a car? Yeah, they're out in the lobby. You want to come in for a counseling appointment? I could. Yeah, yeah go out in the lobby and get my car and call me tonight. How are you feeling right now? Shaky. Shaky. Okay, that's yeah. that's a fear I'll spirit. Hmm? I'll call you like after 10 p.m. tonight. What? I'll call you after 10 p.m. tonight. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hey, now listen. That's a fear spirit. Okay. Did you hear what she said? You, you guys, friends? Yes. Uh, she said, I'm shaky. I'm shaky. See, that's a fear spirit in there. It gets in the body, and then it tries to shut her down. It tries to shut her down from opening up to the Lord. And it's working. She just stands there stiff. See? And then, so what I do is I try to help them. Raise your hand. There you go. That a girl. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Come, say it. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. You know what the situation is. Come on. They got to get out of there. Well, he, yes, you do. Every spirit from my husband, by the authority of the word of God, I command you to come out of me. There he is. Command you to come out of me right now. Get out of there. Come out of my stomach. Come out of there, I said. Come out. Spirit of fear, I command you to come out. That a girl. Spirit of fear, I command you to come out. Okay. She's, you're kind of introverted too. Just take a step out. Come out. Come out. That a girl. Nobody can see you. Get out of my body right now. You demon of fear, come out of me right now. Come on out right now. Every spirit from my husband has to go tonight. Go now, go now. Go now. How are you? Good. I You want to come in for a counseling appointment? Uh, yeah, I want to um, make an appointment. Yeah. Yeah, go out in the hall there and grab one of my cards. They're in the bookstore. My card, call me tonight. Are you tonight? Yeah, okay. go get a card out of the bookstore. What's wrong with you? Um, well, I got let um, I got court coming up. You know what I'm saying? You trumped up charges against me. Okay. And they're saying, I, can, I can help you. Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm not that type of man. I understand. Go get my card. Give me a call, so I, I'll put you on the schedule. Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah, you were brought me here. How you been? Good, how are you? <laughs> Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. 
Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. He's going to come in for an appointment. Okay. Nice meeting you. Okay. Better. Nice Thank meeting you. you. Feel better? Yeah. yeah. Love you. Thank you. I want now. I hate these demons. I hate them. I'm angry. I hate them. I'm angry. How's she doing? Really good. Oh, good. What was in there? Um, her mommy. Her mom hated her. So her mom, oh. dad, self hatred, self disgust. What's her mom's name? Connie. Connie. Yeah, there it is. Take a big breath. Oh, Connie's got to come out tonight. Go. See, you have a heavenly father now. You don't need a mother. You got a heavenly father now. You don't need a mother. Connie, come out right now. Come out of there. Hating my body. Hating my body because I'm overweight. The devil told me I look ugly. My Heavenly Father does not think I'm ugly. I repent of that right now and I command that self rejection. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out. Hating myself. There it is. Good. Here it comes. There it comes. Here it comes. Come on out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on out. Hey, YouTubers, listen to me. YouTubers, put your hand on your body right where that pain is. You got pain in your heart? Put your hand on your heart. Hi. How you doing? What's Not going good. on? What, what's, the, what's happening? I've had hives since like November. My whole body is covered with hives, and okay, now I had my face was disfigured, and I've been scared to come. I, I, I'm, no. I had a lot. I, I'm afraid. To come Let's go. I, I understand. What, when you were younger, what happened? To you? A lot of stuff. As a kid. Lots of stuff. What did, who did it? My mother. What, what was the basic thing she did to you? Um, she didn't tell me that she loved me until I was 48. What's her name? Susanna. Oh, she's still alive. But we we made up now, and she finally she's still told alive. me. Yeah, she finally told me, and she used to okay. tell me not to believe in Jesus because there was no such thing. But now she believes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now raise your hands and close your eyes. And just relax. I don't know why I've been so relax. scared. No, that's a fear spirit in there. Yeah. Okay, close your eyes now. Savannah, in the name of Jesus, you have to come out of there tonight. Come out. Every spirit from Savannah of rejection. Susanna. 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 Rejection from Susanna. Come on out right now. And my husband left me. What's his name? Scott. Scott, every rejection spirit from Scott, come on out right now. Breathe out of your mouth. Breathe. There it goes. Mother, come on out. Keep breathing. Every fear spirit from her ex husband, come on out right now. Come out of her stomach. Come up. Come up right now. Come up. Come on out. I love my mother and I let her go. I let her go from my soul right now. 48 years. She never told me she loved me. I release that now in Jesus' name. Keep breathing. My, my son did drugs Breathe. after my, my husband left really bad. I release yeah, my, my son. I let my son go. All these dysfunct. There it is. There is your son. Come on out. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. There it comes. Come on out. Come out. Hold that. Come on out. Keep coughing. Come out, your son. Come on. Come here. Demon of fear from your son. Come out right now. Go. There he is. Keep coughing. There it comes. Go. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Keep going. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Right now. Come on out. There it is. Come on out. Come out. Come out of that throat. Come out of that body. Quickly, come out. The demon shaking her head. Come out of her right now. Come out of her right now. Come on out. Verbal abuse from the ex-husband. There it is. Come on out. Come out. Verbal abuse. Come out. Verbal abuse. Come out. 
Come out of there. Yes. Don't shake your head. No, devil. You shake your head. Yes. Come out right now. Go. Come out of that body. The ex-husband. Go. The mother. Go. There it goes. Keep coughing. Here it comes. Here they come. Glory to God. Come on out. Come out. Come out. YouTubers, all the ladies down at the front are getting healed and delivered, except one. All of them are getting delivered except one. If, come on, if you will face it and you will repent, you get healed and delivered. Come on, just face it. Just face it right now. Face it. Come out. Poison. Come out of that body. Poison. I'm so Demonic poison from drugs and medication. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Poison from medication. Medications. Come out. Poison. Go. Medication. Pharmacia spirits. Magu spirits. Magic. New Age, sorcery, witchcraft. I bind your power. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Witchcraft, sorcery. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come out, Satan. Come out, you stinking devil. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come on, ladies. Oral sex demons. Oral sex. Come out. Anal sex. Come out. Come on, ladies. Oral sex spirit. Come out. Come on out. Monica Lewinsky picked up demons from Bill Clinton for, during oral sex. She had demonic depression for decades. She still has it. She still has it. She picked up demons from Bill Clinton. Come on, ladies. Oral sex spirit. Come out. Anal sex spirit. Come out. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Out. Come out. What's wrong with that girl? I've been praying for her. What you need, hon? Michelle. What's Michelle? What's, yeah. your, what's yeah. your need? Oh, what's my need? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I, I, my sister has been sick for years. Is it your sister? What's wrong with her? Naomi. She's been sick for several years. Oh, with raised. what? Um, we're not quite sure. The doctors think that she has Lyme disease, but no one has been able to give us uh, an answer. I don't know Lyme Mm. Yeah. Lyme's disease? No. No. Did she have a? Was she abused as a child? We both were really. What did they do to her? Dad. What's his name? Mark. Mark. It's Mark in there. Yeah. Mark. I'm gonna let my dad go now. I'm gonna let Mark go. I gotta let Mark go. I have to let him go. Dad, I love you, but I'm gonna release you now. I don't have Lyme's disease. That's a lie. That's a spirit. There he comes. There he is. Mark, you come out of that body right now. Mark. Come out of that body right now. Mark, come out. She don't have Lyme's disease. That's a joke. That's a demonic joke. Very few cases of Lyme's disease are real. Nine times out of ten, those are demons. It's all fake. She doesn't have Lyme's disease. What do you think? There's a plague of ticks running all over? That's ridiculous. Satan, come out. Mark, come out of there. Get out of that body right now. Come on out. Mark. Mark. Come out. I love you. You told me the right words. I love you. I love you. You told me the right words. I did? Yeah. Something. Did it come out? Pain left. It came out? Oh. 
Love you. Most Thank you for helping us. Thank you. Mark, you come out of that body right now. Go. I let all my dad's demons go now. I let all my dad's demons go now. Now I want them all out tonight. Come on, ladies. You had a bad dad. Did you have a bad dad? You don't need a dad anymore. You got a heavenly father. You replace your dad. You replace your dad with your heavenly father. He would never hurt you in a million years. Not a million years would your heavenly father ever hurt you. Mark! Every demon from Mark, I command you to come out of these sisters. Come out of these sisters right now. Come out of these sisters right now. Mark! Mark, come out of her body right now. Go in Jesus' money name. Mark, self hatred. Mark, rejection. Mark, come out of your daughters right now. Come out of your daughters in Jesus' mighty name. Monday night, YouTubers, I will be in Tucson, Arizona. Monday, excuse me, Monday morning at 10 o'clock, I will be at Teen Challenge for a healing and deliverance service in Tucson. Tucson Teen Challenge next Monday next Monday at 10 in the morning next Friday I'll be here I'll be here for another bizarre teaching and healing service go to the website and hit the teaching button you must read these two articles number one how Satan controls the mind number two Satan's counterattack you will be attacked Within 48 hours of this service, YouTubers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. Read those two articles. You read those two articles. The devil will not allow you to take ground and just keep it. He will try to take it back. You have to fight back with fury. You have to take command over the demons and over your mind. You must remove every negative thought and every lie from your mind. And replace it with the truth of God's word. If you don't. If you don't. You are going to lose. And you're going to lose huge. You're going to lose huge. Monday morning. I'll see you in Tucson. Friday. I'll be back right here. Don't forget about Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Mental illness healing class. Right here. The Arizona Deliverance Center. Don't forget about the healing rooms. The Holy Ghost fell in the healing room last Thursday, yesterday. You wouldn't have believed it. Spirit of God moving. It was flat out awesome. 